for joining us in the Idea Lab. I'm Neely McQueen, and I'm hanging out here with Charles Lee. Charles, for those people that don't know who you are or what you do, tell us a little bit about who you are. Uh, my name is Charles Lee, and I have a company called Ideation, and we really get to be brand innovators for uh, companies and some organizations as well. And, and our little tag is we make good ideas remarkable or worth making a remark about. So we help with business strategy all the way to creative implementation. And you talk a lot about that, but how does that translate into ministry? Like the idea of taking a good idea and making it happen. How does that translate into ministry? Yeah, I kind of frame it this way. The reality is if you look at the percentages and the research, uh, is that the number of people who have great ideas versus those who execute, execute them, not kill them, but actually implement them, are kind of night and day. And so uh, what, what, you know, what really matters is, you know, think about the church. It's probably an organization that really highly emphasizes things like inspiration in the sense like God can inspire your dreams and so forth. And um, I found that a lot of people have dreams that God has given them, and then they sit on them for days, weeks, months, years, sometimes decades. And so I think it has real practical you know, implications is that if God gives you an idea, he didn't give you the idea so you can then take it with you to the grave. Right. Yeah. And you have a book, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, yeah. it's called... Good Idea, Good Now I What? Now What? Uh -huh. Good Idea, Now What? So what, what do we do? We, we, we're sitting in a meeting or we're praying and we have this inspiration, this idea. What's the first thing we should do with a good idea? Yeah, some of the real practical things are uh, things like, uh, I know this sounds really profound, but write it down. Uh, actually, studies have shown that people who have ideas but aren't used to writing it down and just, you know, they go straight to verbalizing the concept or sharing their next big idea are actually less likely to actually implement them than those who take the time to write it down. So, so writing it down actually increases your chances of actual implementation. And then writing it down gives you a point of reference so that you can go back to something to continually refine the concept. It's something that you could give to somebody who, provi you know, who can then provide further input. But if there isn't a starting point, there's a good chance that, because what it does is if you just keep, talk keep talking about your idea, uh, it tricks your brain into thinking you're actually doing something about the idea. It's in the same way, like, in, in if, you, if I was to contextualize it to ministry is, like, we can talk about, like, quote-unquote evangelism all we want or prayer or reading scripture all we want. And the more you talk about it, it almost feels like, okay, I'm doing it because I'm telling everybody else to do it. But the reality is there's a disconnect between thought and actual action. So even from like a basic thing of having something with you always yeah. to kind of write down a good idea that when it comes to you in that moment, you write it down. Yeah, so it's like maybe uh, creating space in your schedule, and everyone's busy. I, I totally get that. But if, is there a system in which you could actually jot new concepts down? Do you have a time in the week where, or maybe even once a month, that you can go back to your brainstorming concepts and work through it? Uh, through more than just a quick five-minute glance, um, you know, most real, like, productive, meaningful, significant type of work will require spurts that are more like 60 to 90 minutes long to actually be really uh, dive into something at a depth that you need to dive into. So it would be literally like shutting off email, um, you know, getting the email icon off the first page of your phone <laughs> into the second page or something like that and creating space that during those 60 or 90 minutes, you will go back and actually work on one of those and start writing it down and so forth. So when do you move to that next step? I'm assuming maybe it's not the next step, but when do you start sharing it with people? When do you start inviting people into the conversation yeah. about this idea? Um, it's just kind of, I mean, there's no absolute rule of when that is, but if you feel like the idea is maybe 60, 70% developed, I think that's a pretty good space. If you feel like it's half there and it needs refinement before you even launch it, that's a good time to invite some trusted voices into the conversation. Um, but the reality is like a lot of the questions you're asking before you launch your idea are not going to be the same questions you're going to be asking when you're actually trying to implement. So my encouragement is be quick to launch, but in order to get there, you got to do the hard work of writing things down so that you're at like maybe 60% and you're on your way and that's when you can constructively invite. Because by then, you'll know how to ask for help. 
So if you came to me and said, hey, Charles, I have this idea, and I'm like, man, that's a great idea. How can I help? And yet you have not thought through how I can help. Yeah. Versus just, you know, you just kind of just saying, uh, can you pray for me? Can you give towards this? But if you came to me and said, Charles, if you have one hour a week, here are five ways you can help me out. Then it be- starts building towards actual implementation. That's interesting. What are some obstacles that we might face as we start to think through these ideas, start putting it down on paper, start having conversations? What yeah. are the things we're going to face that are going to maybe want, force us or make us think we need to give up? Yeah, probably one of the most common um, barriers is, is mainly ourselves. Uh, people like Stephen Pressfield in his book, um, uh, The War of Art, uh, or people like Seth Godin uh, in his book, Lynchman, talk about this notion of a lizard brain, where there's a, a part of our brain that kind of kicks in uh, for survival. And it's the part of the brain that will kind of, if you're in a situation where you need to present a concept or you, you just build something that's really personal to you and you want to make it public, there's a part of our brain that will kick in with all of these irrational reasons as to why that won't launch, why that, while people won't like it, why your boss will fire you as if that happens a lot, right. you know, or like all of these, like if you take a step back, irrational reasons. So I often encourage people to get the way you get over that is put yourself in kind of like the coach, the coach or consultant's chair. So if a young person came to you and said, I have this idea, most of the time, if, they, if, it's, if it's somewhat solid, you would probably reply by saying, you know what, go for it. God's and you'd be optimistic. And then suddenly when the tables are turned, you're like, I can't do this. It's never going to work. Everyone's going to hate it. Yeah. Uh, and the reality is that's not true. Most of that is hypothetical stress. So my encouragement is, it sounds like counterintuitive. Don't listen to your lizard brain. Get moving. And once you start to get moving, that's when you'll start figuring it out. That's, that's great. So we're the biggest obstacle sometimes, yeah. so getting past ourselves. But I think even when you're saying the writing it down and getting 60%, we're working through some of those yeah. things. So really writing down is much more powerful than we give it credit for. Yep. Totally. Definitely. If we wanted to get more information, more resources, learn more about this conversation of idea making and creating this culture, where would we go? Um, I, I write a lot about ideas on my website. It's just Charles, the letter T, Lee.com. Um, and also the book. Uh, the book is designed for really busy people like, or, you know, like us. Yeah. Uh, where it's kind of like a 40 short chapters. They're more like cliff notes. Uh, so, like, sometimes I read books and I like um, long narrative. <laughs> Other times I'm, like, busy. I'm, like, give me the principle. This book was written for people with short attention spans that have a full schedule. So youth workers. So, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it walks you through these little things and it provides little insights on what you can do today to move your idea forward. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Charles. And thank you guys for joining us in the Idea Lab. Yeah.